What's up, everyone? And welcome back to the Mile Higher Podcast. We're your hosts, Kendall and Josh. Yes, and it's episode 43. And we're bringing it back today with some true crime because it's been a while since we've done a good true crime It's been episode. a few weeks, I think, since yeah. we last covered uh, John Gacy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. so today we're back with a huge case to tackle, and that is the unsolved case of Madeline McCann. Yes. Which is a very famous case, right? Yes, and I'm sorry, my laptop's always on. <laughs> Josh is giving me such disappointed looks right now. <laughs> um, but yes, I actually covered this on my channel. This was my first missing persons case that I covered and like no one else was doing it on YouTube back then. So I was so nervous about just posting it and like what what will people think? Will people think it's weird to post about missing people? Like how are people right. going to take this? So I was more focused on that. Then I think the case and I just, you know, it was my first time doing it. So I wanted to revisit it and take a deeper look, see anything I may have missed. And I think there's been a few updates since there I has last been a covered few developments it. with it. So, yes, we are going to be talking about all of that stuff today. And we've got a couple other updates uh, crime wise as well for you guys. But quickly, I just wanted to remind all of you that right now on our merch store, malharmerch.com, we are running a huge sale. It's by far the best sale we'll do all year. Uh, for Black Friday and through Cyber Monday, we're giving all of you guys 30% off your order. And this sale goes, so this will go up um, on Monday. So this runs through Tuesday at 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. So you have a little bit of extra time to get anything you want at that 30% off by then. So yeah, hop on it. And the code, of course, is Turkey MF, bitch. <laughs> well, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's bitch. just turkey mf okay <laughs> yes turkey mf will get you the 30 percent off so just want to share that with all of you but also i wanted to quickly thank all of our patrons for their loyal support yes. and today we have a patron question from sandy she said hey guys do you believe that fate exists if so wouldn't that contradict having free will why don't you give us your take that's like something i've always you know thought on and off about forever like the idea of you know, how much of our life is predetermined and right. how much is our own choices? Like, or is everything supposed to happen the way? Does everything happen for a reason? Yeah. I don't know. I think it's kind of a mixture of both. But I do think that there is bigger forces at play or like a grand plan, but it's not like it's going to happen exactly how. Like know, every step planned. is not pre-planned. Like the way that I look at it is. There might, like you just said, there might be some grand master plan for your life or something, but yeah. there's no plan on how you get there, how you get there. Yeah. It's all left up to us to sort of make our way through things. Cause that's like the whole thing that you and I believe is that, you know, you put something out there like manifest manifestation, yeah. you know, you believe something is going to come to pass, but yet you don't know how you're going to make that come to pass or how is it going to you know, show itself to you? How is it going to pop up in your life? Like something yeah. like that. Yeah. And like how it depends on how sp specific you're going to be with destiny. Like, is yeah. it you're destined to like, if you're like, I'm destined to marry Kim Kardashian, you know, like <laughs> obviously, no, I don't think it's to that extent. I think it's more like you will do like for me, maybe like you will influence people or something, you know, like something it's more, more of a, of a generalized general, thing. Yeah. yeah, but I do think I mean, I love the idea, uh, you know, we've talked about reincarnation and the idea of souls planning out life before they're born into a body. <laughs> and I just love the idea of that. It just sounds so interesting to me that maybe I planned it. And then, you know, we've talked about, too, like maybe other souls work with you to plan something together and then you like go into life and try to. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I don't know if it's true. It's just something we've read. And um, we talked about it in the it's just a theory that a lot of people who believe in reincarnation believe. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're totally right. And I think as far as free will goes, I think free will, you know, centers around, you know, your your thinking, uh, the choices that you make specifically. But that doesn't necessarily have to interfere with fate, you know, like it yeah. doesn't have to. I think they kind of coexist and work. Yeah together in a way but i do think there's such a thing as destiny and i do think that things do happen for a reason and that there's little you well know. there's just too many there's just too many circumstances in everybody's life especially extraordinary mm -hmm. examples that you've heard from other people 
of stories that they have on how they, you know, met somebody or how they mm -hmm. all of a sudden were healed or cured from something. It's like it seems a little too perfect. Are these really all just coincidences? Like, are yeah. all this just coincidence, <laughs> or is there, or is there something more? You know, is there something such as destiny or fate or something like that? I like to think that there is because it makes me feel like there's a plan for my life. <laughs> that this isn't all just me a it's meaningless not just a crazy simulation. fucking roller coaster. <laughs> it's actually going somewhere and it has a plan. That's what I like to think. Yeah, I mean, I think everything's way too, way too far or way too complex yeah. to just be by chance. You know, everything mm -hmm. is by chance. I don't we always that. talk about how the idea of like the planet and how everything coexists and how so everything perfect. is all, the all of the systems that are in place that mm -hmm. make up biology and chemistry and all these different things are all just by chance. You know, it's like, yeah, that sounds like bullshit, <laughs> but you know, I don't know. I don't know. The, these, hard questions man i know they're really hard it seems like you guys never ask us questions that like i can give a for sure answer on it's always stuff that's like oh well you know one side and the other side like i see both like i definitely think fate exists but i also think we have free will so that's i just love to see how deep deep you guys are and how i know you guys are so deep i mean we love getting all of the comments and tweets and everything else mm -hmm. of you know after you watch one of our podcast or whatever you guys your tell thoughts. us like or some, your theory or yeah something. exactly yeah. something new or you know if you got to hang out with us we would be able to have like the most deep conversation about this particular topic or yep. this you know life or death or and i love that and i love that our origins podcast did so well and that you guys loved it so much because that was such an interesting thing to talk about the beginning of the universe and where really we came was. from and I definitely want to do another episode just about like how did life begin because there's so many theories about mm -hmm. that and then mm -hmm. we obviously covered death already so i don't know it's so interesting and then you were telling me how there's even more theories and things like that about birth and stuff like you didn't you tell me there was like a conspiracy about birth or something there's like theories or something oh the yeah well there's i don't really know if you could even classify it as a theory other than i just thought you like, said there was like a bunch of like really weird things that about people before? have come up with like about the about birth like what happens at birth like what is actually oh happening? i don't know maybe someone else told you that maybe it was a commenter i don't have that many i only uh, the only one i do know of is people think that like you're you come out crying at birth because you're mourning your previous life and you still remember it and in that baby stage you actually do have your past brain and like i don't know it's very interesting that's the only theory I've had is that like you die and then you instantly like end up being born. Where is that else. memories being stored at? I don't know, dude. That's why I said it's not really a good theory. It's like an internet meme. It's a very, it's, it's very theoretical. In yeah. Nature. It's like it's someone not. on Twitter wrote it out and it's like gone viral because yeah, I mean, I didn't tell you that. So we must've like read a commenter's thing and gotten confused. I read so many weird things, but <laughs> Thank you for that question, Sane. It was really interesting. I, yeah. I love these deep questions. I love to contemplate the infinite. But something that we wanted to talk about today, because we covered it in a previous episode, is the Chris Watts Ugh. and uh, Shanann Watts uh, murder Watt. case, essentially. And this past week, Chris Watts actually got his sentence. Yep. Um, if you remember, Chris Watts actually killed his wife, Shanann, and their two daughters. Well, and we Bella blessed and you guys with um, he was trying to say that sh he killed the girls or no, that Shanann, his wife, killed the girls and that he saw it on some type of baby monitor. And he ran in the room and got so mad at her that he strangled her. And he was like saying he's going to get his lawyers to test the girls necks and stuff. And everyone was like, dude really you're gonna try to blame this woman that you murdered for killing her own kids how fucked up is that so anyway eventually he caved like we all probably well, knew he, he would i looked into this a little deeper and it sounds like they gave him a ton they gave him a polygraph test initially when he came in after that interview he had yeah, on yeah, the yeah. News and stuff mm -hmm. and they gave him this. a polygraph test and apparently when he came in he had uh he was wearing loose clothing and no wedding ring and the people that were do conducting the test were definitely sensing deception from him mm -hmm. and he the whole idea of him you know saying that he came in and intervened with you know shanann killing their children or whatever he told that to his father too 
as yeah. what the story was. Yeah. And that's why he did it. But they drilled him hard and they actually mm -hmm. got the Colorado Bureau of Investigation involved. I think even the FBI got involved yeah. a bit and they questioned him for a long ass time. And eventually he caved in. He realized and he it admitted. was he was bleak. like, yeah, his he story screwed. wasn't making sense. There's video of him taking the bodies, the bodies yep. out to his truck. I mean, he was screwed and he tr did try to tell his parents that. But even they were like, dude, we don't believe you. And um, I watched the um, sentencing, the hearing, because he didn't he doesn't have a trial. For those of you who don't you just plead know, guilty. Yeah. If you plead guilty, charges. you don't have you don't go through a trial. So it's just but he can't get the death penalty. So by pleading guilty, he's taking death penalty off the table for himself. So he'll get he has gotten life in prison. He'll never get out. Yeah, um, so on November 6, he pleaded guilty to the nine yeah. charges he faced, which was five counts of first degree murder. Yeah, and his parents were standing up there and they were like, you know, we don't try to, we're not trying to say make up for this or or plead anything like he should go to jail pretty much like this. I can't believe he did this to our, because it's their, their grandchildren, you know? Yeah. So... It's just a terrible situation. Yeah, he was sentenced on Monday to three consecutive life sentences, along with two other life sentences to be carried out concurrently, in addition to 48 years for unlawful termination of pregnancy yeah. for the death of unborn child and He's 12 never getting years out. each for the three counts of tampering with a deceased body. Yeah. Now, here's the interesting conversation. <clears throat> the conversation I've been having... I'm sorry, I'm coughing a ton. I'm sick. We both have colds. What are we gonna do? You don't have a cough button for That's me. That's only for radio. I heard. What am I supposed to do? Just like <laughs> well, it's fine. Swallow I can, it. <laughs> I can. We'll have him fix it. Yeah. Can you swallow a cough and just hold it? <laughs> it kind of prevents you from talking, you know. Um, <laughs> but the interesting conversation here that I keep having with my followers on like Twitter and stuff is which is worse? Which is a worse punishment? Like, do you think, and this is not a um, debate of, do you believe in the death penalty or not? I don't yeah. even want to get into this. Yeah. Which one do you think is personally a worse sentence? Because personally for me, I would definitely want the death penalty over life in prison. I would not want to sit there and, th and have like memories of what I did to the, my whole family in like a, basically a box my whole life. Like if it were me, I would rather get the death penalty. So when people are always like, he sh like they're mad that he didn't get the death penalty, I'm always confused because I'm kind of like, that would have been an easier way out. But not for him clearly, because he chose to plead guilty. So he clearly didn't want it. He wants to live. Yeah. So I don't know. I guess it's different for everybody. And I can't really like say what I would do since I'm not in this situation. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a tough situation because... Who doesn't say that Chris Watts, if he goes to prison for the rest of his life, you know, become, you know, really works on himself, works through what he did, and at the end of his life is like a good person, you know, like he's... Well, yeah, but that's not what I'm asking. No, I know. I know. But I'm just, I'm just saying that, no, I agree. I think it can go both ways, though. I think you could, I think it could, the death sentence or life in prison can swing either way as far as better or worse. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if you get the life sentence, if you're a shitty mm -hmm. person yeah. and you go to jail for life and you're just rotting, in it's going to be a shitty, like, and you're not, and you're not <laughs> sorry for what you did. You're you not remorseful to make up for it. Right. And you don't do anything to, to make up back. for it. Then yeah, that's going to be basically mental torture mm -hmm. for the entire rest of your existence. But it also gives somebody like Chris Watts a second chance at, at life in a sense because he gets an opportunity he knows that he's never going to see the light of day or he's or, or he'll probably see the light of day but he won't be out of prison for the rest of the time that he's alive mm -hmm. but a lot of people in this situation find religion in prison they they we, we i mean there's that show on netflix where they talk to killers that mm -hmm. are on death row and things like that, that and some killers. of them seem like I am good a killer, good humans called. like even though they did these horrible horrible things that can never be undone yeah. they had time to work on themselves and become a no i understand person. it can be done and i'm so just if questioning victim, if it's a if which is the worst punishment that was my question i think death's the worst worst punishment because this is done your your existence is over that's it but i just don't see it that way like me personally i and i really get, do believe in reincarnation so i kind of see it as like you fuck this life up enough like start over right you and what, what's best for the victims too? Like what's best for yeah. Shanann Watts family? Yeah. 
But I'm, and I'm not saying I believe in the death penalty or like I think I don't really know where I stand on that issue. That's one issue that I just kind of seem to straddle the fence on. Like I, think I see it both does, ways. I I see both debates and both arguments that I've heard. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Personally, I would I would not want to live in prison the rest of my life. No, it's awful. Prison is horrible. like no matter how whatever you earn, that takes years first of all to earn like any privileges, and it's unsafe. It's scary. And for him specifically, it's not going to be a very safe place. No, they don't like baby how, killers in there. How famous he is now because yeah. of this. He'll probably be in, in uh, isolation, which sucks yeah. as well. Yeah, which is way worse <laughs> than general population for sure. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, they're not going to let him around a bunch of other people. But no, I think I think either way, I think he definitely needs to reflect. And I I'm sh assuming he probably is because. It doesn't yeah. seem like there's anything really mentally wrong with well, him. I've, like, what happened? What exactly happened? That's I've what's... read that he's seeming to, like, come out of this, like, whatever he's been in. Like, he was kind of in, like, a, this weird funk when he did it. And then he's been, like, kind of coming to realization about what reality, like, what he did and the reality of it. People, like, I've read articles of people that have, like whatever attorneys that said he's like crying and stuff and he's yeah. just like finally it's like hit him recently yeah because at first like they wasn't showing emotion i and, think he was in shock i think he just was like <laughs> yeah and that's another interesting argument do you think it was premeditated do you think he planned to do this or do you think he like me personally which i can't really say because i don't have the inside info that the investigators do but it seems to me that he just snapped that he like snapped on one of the kids and killed them and then was and like the other one saw so he killed them too killed bella and celeste and then when the mom came home and freaked out he killed her too yeah it had to have been something like that and i mean when you look at the whole thing as a whole and you look into what was going on in chris's life at the time he was like totally having a double life going on he was he was yeah. in a uh, relationship having an affair with somebody he worked with <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh for like two months or so he had a lot and of he, personal he had issues. a lot of issues there are they're you know so maybe he did major financial trouble i don't know it's interesting but why what's the uh, what's the outcome for it's not a better mm -hmm. outcome for him mm -mm. I, I think in this case just because of how i don't know though but it's like fuck it's like if it was not premeditated then why didn't he just like kill like kill them some other way because he strangled the mom and then he uh smothered the children oh he did yeah Oh God, it makes me so upset. And it's so sad. I read the thing. I read the autopsy or um, the medical examiner's report, and they said that based upon the injuries that uh, the little girls had, they were fighting for their life Ugh. as their father killed them. Like how? Fu it's just fucking horrible. I honestly like can't even think about and it. Then it makes the unborn me so upset. child lost its life clearly, and mm -hmm. it's just an overall really sad story. And I think it is. So maybe he did plan it. Maybe he just, I don't know. Like dude. maybe he wanted he to have this other life with this other woman. And he was like, I got to get rid of all yeah. of these. Baggage. But how did he think that was going to play out? I never understand these men who kill their fucking wives and kids or just their wives because they want a new relationship. Like, are you dumb, dude? You can just leave. You can get a divorce. Like, how do they think this is going to play out? I'll kill her and then I'll wait till it all dies down. And then I'll go get the other girl. Like, are you right? fucking kidding me? It's yeah. like that case. <laughs> the killer clown case in Florida. It was like a boyfriend and it was like husband and wife. The husband had a girlfriend on the side. He paid her to go in and kill his wife. And then like 10 years later, he marries the woman. <laughs> so it's like, I just, it's shocking to me that people actually think they're going to pull something like that off. And that's why I think when I think, you know, Chris Watts, could he have premeditated it? I'm like, could he have been that stupid that he really thought he'd somehow be able to get into a new relationship if he just got rid of them all like what the fuck dude what do you think is gonna happen there's got to be more to the story there's got to be something untold about what happened that day there i i think you're on the right track as far as something happened with the kids he freaked out or snapped or something he just they, maybe they did something shit or... and he maybe he accidentally i don't know he i don't know it seems pretty clear that he's like smothered like why yeah, it's not like smothering is like a clear yeah. you don't smother a kid mm -mm. to discipline them like you're mm -mm. that's a way to kill somebody yeah so it's it's know, really man. difficult to say whether it was premeditated it or could if it have was, been or if it was just a 
Maybe he, he had it planned and he was like, I'll wait till she's out of town and then I'll do it. Oh, God, what it's a crazy. sicko. Sick fuck. Yeah. Now he's in jail for the rest of his life. It's really, yeah, it's just a really sad, God, sad I story. I just feel so badly for like his family, her family, everyone. Like I really feel for his family, especially hearing their side. Like I, it's so hard when there's like a killer that people hate. People normally hate their families too because they figure like, you know, if they're evil or they're capable of doing this, they got it from somewhere. You must be a bad person too. And they've gotten a lot of like, people are very judgy and gossipy about them online and I just felt really sorry for them because, I mean, they're losing their daughter-in-law. They're losing their grandchildren. And now they're losing their son, too, because he's going to jail. Plus, they have to process the fact that he fucking did all this. Yeah, and they have to live with that for the rest yeah, of their lives, Yeah, it's terrible. Too. I feel so sorry for them. And then Bella's family. I mean, um, Shanann's, yeah. Shanann's fa family. And, oh, it's just like yeah, nobody so unneeded, too. Just so unnecessary, dude. If you didn't like her anymore, you didn't like your kids anymore, go get a fucking divorce. Why do you have to kill them? Yes. Yeah, Why do you have really to kill weird. them? Just go kill yourself. If that's like, I don't know what he what problems he was having or if or it was financial was, like, or whatever what but you did not need to kill those girls and their mother no i don't know what he was going to gain from it i i i think he wasn't thinking straight maybe he was even i don't know maybe he was on drugs for all we know maybe. he could have had his mindset completely changed or maybe he had one of those like br traumatic brain injuries where you like go crazy and like don't even know what's going I know, on something i don't know weird happened. Something, something weird happened for sure yeah let us let us know what you what you all think because i don't know it's it's really bizarre but I've got another interesting uh, subtopic for us today. But before we get into that, I just want to thank Curology for supporting our show. 62% of women think it's very important to use skincare tailored to their unique needs. But drugstore acne care is one size fits all. Curology is personalized acne care customized to you and your skin's unique needs and mixed by an expert just for you. Curology is a one-step skincare routine completely customized for you without scheduling an appointment, paying a copay, or even leaving your home. You can connect with an online yeah, dermatology sweet. provider, which is super convenient, and they will design a custom prescription acne formula to be sent right to your door. You just like literally send them a picture of your face from the front and then from both sides, and then a dermatologist looks at your skin. I mean, yeah. It's amazing. And you answer some now. questions about it. Yeah. Like, are you worried about wrinkles yeah. and things what like that? Yeah, what are you, what are the issues you're having? Yeah, it's really, really cool. And I've been using it for like a week or two now. And it's like, it's, it's like already a nightly helping. wash. Yeah. It's already helping a lot. Yeah, we heard of from it's a lot a, of a you nightly that it cream. works really well too. It's so. a cream actually. Medicated yeah. cream. So right now all you got to do is go to Curology.com, answer some questions about your skin, snap a few quick selfies like we said. And then Curology's expert dermatology providers create a skincare solution just for you. It even comes with your name on the bottle. Damn. It's personal, it's truly is personalized for you. There's no gimmicks, no complicated routine, and 88% of Curology users see results. All you got to do is go to curology.com slash mile higher to get your first month free plus a free gift. Just pay $4.95 for shipping and handling. That's curology.com slash mile higher for your first month free plus a free gift. Again, curology.com slash mile higher. All right. Yeah. This was something else interesting that you guys actually, a lot of you started pinging us with stuff, which I want to put it out there. If any of you don't follow the mile higher podcast on Twitter, it's at mile higher pod. And if you follow us on Twitter, you feel free to send us cool articles, woke news articles, as we talked about last week. Yeah. Anything that's just kind of really interesting. It could be about ancient civilizations, history. It could be about really anything. Mm -hmm. But there is something that happened this past week that kind of made news, and that was an American man named John Allen Chow was killed by the Sentinelese tribe in the Andaman Islands. Jeez. Yeah. And we've heard about these guys before, but it's been a while. Basically, the uh, Sentinelese are the most isolated tribe in the world. Interesting. I've always wondered if there's like yeah. one that's like really, really hidden. Oh, yeah. I mean... Leave it up to your imagination to wonder about these folks, but oh, they live on their own small forested island called North Sentinel, which is approximately the size of Manhattan. Is it a part of any of any other country, or is it uh, its own technically kind of India? India is oh, okay. it's like off the coast of India, so India kind of sets the rules and things like that for it, I believe. Mm. But they have no contact with the outside world whatsoever. And if anybody tries to come near their island, they will fucking attack you and kill you. No, Jeez. no, no questions asked. Yeah. 
And what's crazy is many uh, experts out there believe that they've been living on this island for at least 55,000 years. This Damn. is like a Neolithic tribe. That's so interesting. I wish the we could go that, interview them and have them on the podcast. Oh my God. <laughs> That'd be hella interesting. It would be if we could speak their language or, you know, not be <laughs> yeah, murdered, just kidding. killed. Yeah. It's just crazy to think about that there's literally uncon like tribes out there that are living without that any off. idea of what the actual world is like no internet no like no modern that's honestly fascinating i would love to see what they're like so well, they really the don't thing. like people that are like not part of their thing no not at all they kill okay. anybody that comes near okay. it that back in sense. 2004 there was a huge tsunami uh that happens Damn. on near india or Bangla or what's that other Sri Lanka, if you remember. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a actually. huge tsunami mm -hmm. that like took out everything. Yeah. So they actually were wondering if like they made it out, like, are they okay out there? So somebody in a helicopter flew over their island to try to see them. And there's a famous picture that shows one of them with a bow and arrow literally shooting arrows at the helicopter. Wow. Like they like just what do they think they're going to do? Like pierce the helicopter uh, well, with an arrow? They don't know. They don't know what the helicopter is. So they oh think it's like God. some evil thing in the sky and they're like protecting oh their land God, from it. Oh my God, that's so wild to think about that there's people still like that on the planet. And then there was a 2006, I think, two, two fishermen or something got killed because apparently around their island, there's really good fishing. And it's a really like, there's a lot of poaching that happens in that area. Like the whole area is a protected area. So they, yeah. they've made it kind of like a, I don't know, historical landmark. Yeah, call protected it. Like it yeah. yeah, protected it to preserve it, to preserve mm -hmm. this tribe that's been there for so long. Wow. Because the mi most minor thing, like a common cold, like your fucking cold right now could wipe out everybody on the island. Why? Because they just have they different don't have germs? Any, they have no diseases or anything that we have. As really? No, no, they have ne oh, they've that's never fascinating. They, their immune systems are probably so different. They've never had anything that we have had because they've been uncontacted. All of our stuff came from Europe and everything and came over with us to here. And that's why we remember so, we infected the Indians and yeah. the Native Americans got really sick because they were basically uncontacted by the, yeah, they were the outside world. They got until super we came. sick. They so many of them died, like half of them died at least from illnesses and STDs and stuff. So that's the main reason why they're so protected about it. Like they're like, you could literally kill. And I think they only said there's like wow. 50 to 150 of them. They think wow. on the island, there's not that many, but if some, if like somebody like this American actually went, a sh you know, ashore and didn't, you know, get killed and had some type of anything could literally kill everybody. Whoa, that's so crazy. But yeah, just this month, uh, John Allen Chow was killed by these Senhalese tribe. Damn. What happened? Well, they he, they came too close and he got shot with arrows. Oh, arrows. I was just wondering yep. how they did They it. got too close. Yeah. He paid, I think he paid, there was like this tourism thing. They, they had it banned, but I think they recently lifted it. So that's why he paid fishermen, I think, to take him just near it so he could just see. He wasn't going to go ashore or anything, but they got close enough that they fucking shot him with arrows. Wow. And then Damn. the fishermen, I think, said they saw them Must get his good. body, bring his body ashore, and then they buried him. Alive? or Well, he was dead already. He had a bunch of arrows in him. Damn. Yeah. That is crazy. But the reason why this is such big news is because A, it's an American, and B, they want to recover his body. So they're trying right now to figure out ways. How do they recover this this man's body because he has a family back at home that you know obviously you want your loved one to come and we home. can't like communicate with them it's like they're aliens almost literally like what i think the there's fuck? maybe like a few experts that might know like how to communicate with them but they've had no luck so far like they don't want anything to do with anybody yeah they probably think we're all a bunch of pieces of shit what if they're aliens like straight up i don't know but they're, like protected they're actually protected by governments but they're like primitive dude they're super <laughs> primitive like no i know interesting they're, yeah. they're hunter gatherers they don't have wow they that's have basic really cool. structures they're living i would as love if it was, to see if only we could send like a 
tiny little drone in there and like see what their life is like. I'd love to see what they're fucking doing. Like, what are they eating and like what is their life like? Yeah, oh, they I'm fish. Sure it's so they crazy. fish the reef and they have yeah. they build little boats and it's like Moana there. But they stay on their island and they're like, you know, it is like Moana. Then they stay on their island. You no one leaves the that's island. True. It's exactly like that. Yeah, exactly like that. And there's so many. I, there's so many other tribes out there. I know in Africa. I think there's tribes even in the Amazon rainforest that are still just never have been contacted before. We've never even made contact with them or seen them even, but we know they're there. That is so interesting. Isn't that crazy? That is. And I feel bad for those two fishermen too. Yeah. God, that's scary. They they went to that. sleep on their boat and the boat broke loose and the boat drifted ashore. Oh no. Oh. So they woke up on the shore. Well, they woke up dead. I mean, they were dead. Oh they got killed God. as soon as they came ashore. And they said that they actually put their heads on fucking sticks and put it on the beach as like a warning sign. Like they're, it reminds me of like so many of those movies, you know, where yeah. the natives are the like, they're well, brutal Well, that's actually savages. what they did. Um, a lot of those groups that like, they did that with, um, it's some of the native Americans did that as well put people's heads on sticks. There was one that it was actually an, a native American chief that the pilgrims put on a stick for 24 years. They left it up for wow. 24 years. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> Fucking and disgusting strange decorations. But um, anyway, Fuck. that's crazy. But anyway, <laughs> this episode <laughs> of the podcast is brought to you by simple contacts. Great transition. there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that fucking SNL show that cracked me up. The horrible transition for podcasts. I don't know if you guys saw that, but anyway, Kendall wears contact lenses and she's always dreading the annual appointment to the optometrist, I think is what it is, to get yes. her prescription mm -hmm. renewed because it's just kind of a pain, you know. Well, Nobody I did it once and it was just not a good experience. It was like, it just was very confusing. And then it, they were so expensive to buy it through the actual place that yeah. after I did the exam and everything, because you don't know how much it's going to be until after you do everything. I, I like gave up on it. So I always had like I had some sample ones, but then I never like found them anywhere else. And I was going to try to get them online. But all of the websites that I went to didn't have toric lenses, which is for astigmatism because my right. eyes are like shaped like footballs. <laughs> so, yeah, that's why I just gave up on even wearing contacts. But it's been like on my to do list to get get it done. But of course, I didn't want to go get the actual exam redone. Yeah. And that's when conveniently simple yes. contact came along. Yes. And they let you renew your prescription and reorder your brand of lenses from anywhere in minutes. Mm -hmm. Simple Contacts brings a doctor's office to your home. The they vision test do. is designed by doctors and every test is carefully reviewed by a doctor, which that's exactly what Kendall did. The app's really cool. You literally take the vision test on the app mm -hmm. and we did it in her house. And it like tells you like it has a sensor to know how far back you're standing yeah. from your phone. So like Josh held it up for me and then it, made it like made me keep stepping back until I was 10 feet exactly back and not any further. And yep. then it does like an eye test so I can see like with my glasses on so I could see how updated my current prescription is. And then they adjusted it and sent me new ones. Super easy. Yeah, it's super easy and convenient. And they also offer an amazing selection with every brand of lenses and their prices are extremely hard to beat. The eye exam is only 20 bucks and they offer free shipping and one note to uh, put out there is that sim the simple contacts vision test isn't a replacement for your periodic full eye health exam. Simple contacts only tests that your current pres prescription still helps you see 2020 and renews that prescription. Simple contacts doesn't write completely new prescriptions or examine eye health. So yeah, it's not a complete replacement for going to the eye doctor, but, it's but easy, once you have yeah. your prescription from them, then you can just renew it through the app, which is super convenient. And right now you can save $20 on your first simple contacts order. Go to simplecontacts.com slash mile higher and enter promo code mile higher at checkout. Again, that's $20 off your first simple contacts order. When you go to simplecontacts.com slash mile higher and enter promo code mile higher at checkout. All right, let's get into the unsolved case of Madeline McCann, perhaps the most, one of the most famous cases. And for all of you, I think folks it is in the, the most UK, famous, especially missing. I know a ton case. about this, but Madeline McCann. Madeline McCann was a young girl at the time of her disappearance who was born on May 12, 2003. She was born in uh, Leicester. Leicester. Or, 
I used to be able to say, I think it's Leicester. Leicester? <laughs> Leicester? Yeah. Leicester? And lived with her family in Rothley and also in Leicestershire. <laughs> That's not right. Why do you guys in the UK have such crazy fucking names? <laughs> and everything's for everything? like Shire. I know, I know <laughs> it is. It's such an English thing. Actually, it makes it sound so nice, though. It does. I just think green, green yeah. fields because of the Shire from <laughs> yeah. Lord of the Rings. But anyway, Madeline McCann's parents are Kate and Jerry. Who are also very famous now. Yes. So Kate and Jerry, uh, both of them were physicians and, and practicing Catholics. Kate Marie McCann graduated in 1992 with a degree in medicine from the University of Dundee. She then moved briefly into um, obstetrics and gynecology and then anesthetics, I think, and mm -hmm. finally general practice. Gerald Patrick McCann graduated from the University of Glasgow with a BS in physiology and sports science in 1989. And then he went on and uh, qualified in medicine and in 2002 obtained his MD, his medical degree and then since then, he's been a consultant cardiologist at the Glenfield Hospital. The two met in 1993 in Glasgow and were married in 1998. Madeline was born in 2003, and, and they also had twins, a boy and a girl named Sean and Amelie, right? Amelie? Amelie? Is that right? Do you remember? Uh, how it could be it? Emil. Amel Let me see it. It's A-M-E-L-I. Oh. Um, Can't remember how they pronounce it. I don't know. Amelie? Amelie? But the twins were born two years after it. So the timeline of the kidnapping. So the McCanns were on vacation with seven friends and eight children in all, including the McCanns, three kids. And on Saturday, April 28th, 2007, the McCann family arrived in Portugal for their spring family vacation. And they were planning to spend a week in a Praia de Luz, which is a sub subdivision Deleuze. in Portugal. De Luz, sorry. De Luz. Yeah. De Luz, yeah which is a very popular, it's like an, it almost looks like a, res, like a resort, but it's really. It's like, like an apartment complex kind of, but it's like condos, but it's all connected. It, it is kind of like a resort. It has like a restaurant sort of, there. Yeah. Not really resort is the right word, but. Yeah, but they're like condos. So yeah, I don't know. It's yeah, it's like confusing. condos around a pool and there's tennis courts. So it's definitely like a vacation yeah, destination. Spot. Yeah. And know. it was very popular area for British people to come on holiday. So the apartment that they were staying in at the Ocean Club was apartment 5A, and this was a ground level in a two-story apartment home. The other families also rented out apartments next to 5A. The apartment complex was a part of Mark Warner's Ocean Club Resort. However, each of the apartments were privately owned and rented out. The apartment block was not a gated complex, and their specific unit was accessible to the public from two sides. So this is not like a secure secure resort you know most resorts are secure and there's you know usually gates and things like that and people you got to check in with but this is just a uh privately owned yeah uh, like situation like an airbnb <laughs> you would rent right so, exactly yeah there's sliding glass patio doors in their living room and at the back which overlooked the ocean club's pool tennis courts and tapas restaurant and bar the patio doors could be access via a public street where a small gate and a set of steps led up to apartment 5a's balcony and living room and this is a very key thing uh later on that there's public there's street access to yes the balcony which is mm -hmm. shitty yeah it wasn't a very safe situation i mean not that even at a resort you should like leave your kids though you know mm -hmm. but it it's it this definitely was even less safe than like a resort because it had just like outside access so like yeah, randoms anybody can could come just, in yeah anybody could just be walking by but the mccann's children slept in a bedroom next to the front door which the mccann's kept locked the bedroom had a one waist high window with curtains and a metal exterior shutter the latter controlled by the cord inside the window and the mccann kept the curtains and shutter closed throughout the holiday the window overlooked a narrow walkway in residence par car park, which was separated by a low wall from the street. Madeline slept in a single bed next to the bedroom door on the opposite, opposite side of the room from the window while the twins were in travel cots in the middle of the room. So they had, they were sort of like on the floor. Yeah. Which, yeah, I guess cause they were younger. Yeah, they had so one, they yeah. couldn't sleep in the bed. So it was Thursday, May 3rd, and they were on their second to last day of their holiday. And the McCanns were having breakfast when Madeline asked, why didn't you come when Sean, her brother, and I cried last night? 
The parents thought this was a little odd because they didn't know what she was talking about. But now that they think back on it, they believe that maybe someone tried to do the kidnapping the night before, but had to bail because the kids were crying out for help. Wouldn't they have said that though? Like, hey, there was like someone trying to break in. I mean, she wasn't that young. Wouldn't she have like set, said someone was like trying to come in here or someone scared us? Like, why didn't she come in when we were crying? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, weird. that's that. That is that weird. That seems like a strange like remark. And and the only reason that we know that they said this or that she said this was from the parents. So we have to believe them that that she said that. Right. Because it could be part of like making a story make more sense. Mm. I don't know. I'm just just you know playing devil's advocate here. No, that's great. So that day, May 3rd, after breakfast, the children spent the morning in the resort's kids club. And after this, the family had lunch at their apartment before heading to the pool. The children returned to the kids club until later that evening when their mom picked them up at around 6 p.m. and took them back to the apartment. Their father went for a tennis lesson, and once he got back, the McCanns put the children to bed around 7 p.m. At around 8.30 p.m., the parents left the apartment to go out to dinner with their friends in the Ocean Club's open-air tapas restaurant located on the other side of the pool, which nothing unusual there. I mean, when you, well, I mean, it's debatable. No, I know. But I'm just saying like for the parents to like want to leave, cause like even in your situation, you've been yeah. on vacation with your parents where mm -hmm. they left you because they're going to go hang out with, yeah, you know, they're sure. going to go off and do something, which no, I mean, you're probably did. older than Madeline was at the time. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like the first time I got left alone, I was like maybe nine, eight. Like, how old's Madeline again at this time? Five? Yeah, she's she's pretty. Three, so. Yeah, she's young. So, I mean, too young to be left by herself. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Totally. Um, And the other ones, like, she should, they really shouldn't be leaving the other ones by themselves. They're even younger. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's it's kind of, well, they're still it's like really crib, bizarre. People have been caught. very critical of them for this. And I mean, it is you have to consider it was like literally across the street from them. Like they could feet. see it. And, feet. but the problem was, is basically picture like a line of these little condo units and then a pool. And then on the other side of the pool, there's the restaurant, but theirs was the last condo in the line on the right side from where they could see. So they couldn't really keep that good of an eye on no, it. Like if it was directly across and they could see the entire time, I'd maybe understand. But there was also like windows they can't see, a door they couldn't see, right? So, I mean, I don't think it's very great parenting, but I'm sure if they could go back, they wouldn't well, have I done think, this. I think also you have to think about what their state of mind was, what they were thinking at this time. They are probably thinking, no big deal. We've done this before. This and place is safe. Because when you think about it, a lot of people don't ever think of think about the scenarios that could play out or worst case scenarios that could play out yeah. in these types of situations. You're like, oh, that could never happen to me, but it fucking can happen to you. So, well, I, I mean, a lot, a lot of people would never in their right mind leave their kids. But to like, leave them in an apartment that has public access to the just street. Yeah. Well, the weirdest part about it, I mean, there's one thing is leaving your kid in the apartment. The weird thing is leaving it on, didn't they leave the front door like unlocked? Yeah, let me let me get through this real quick because this explain this will okay. explain some of that. So, in order to get to the restaurant, you had to walk on a public street and then through the resort to the other side of the pool, which was in total about two hundred ninety five feet. So, oh, they you had to go onto the street to mm -hmm, get to the restaurant. Mm -hmm. So it's not in the same. No, it's, it's not like. But it's like part of the. It's a part of the complex, but it's not even remotely it's really not so the public close. street is kind of like almost in the complex or it's like right right next to it yeah yeah so you have to kind of like step out and go yeah i, I see okay it seems so like that's even stupider what the fuck yeah so the top of the apartment was visible from the tapas restaurant but not the doors the patio yeah. doors could be locked only from the inside so the yeah so they left, left it unlocked Unlocked. So that's where I'm like okay I really like I have I try to have sympathy for people but that that's like really very weird to me to leave three pretty much babies in an unlocked apartment in Portugal. Like this is a foreign country for them, dude. Would we ever do this? Like, let's think about, we wouldn't even do this with our dogs. Like, <laughs> yeah, seriously, I wouldn't do that here even though. I know. Yeah. It's very strange. Like to in a foreign place where you, what I'm saying is it's like, un, 
you're kind of like out of your element. You'd right. think you'd be more on guard than ever when you're I'm not saying Portugal is unsafe or anything, but it's new territory for them. So I think it is so bizarre that they would leave their kids with the doors unlocked where there is public access right next to it, especially since they were the end unit. Like someone could have just been walking down the street and seen her because they were like the very end, the last unit on the line. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I always thought like maybe one of the scenarios is she like left. She just like got up and left, which that we'll could be possible or she got up to go look for them. But they had a child safety gate at the top of the steps from the patio and a low gate at the bottom so that no one would be able to escape out of the apartment while they were gone. The kids? Yeah. Oh. If your kids are too young that you have to leave a baby gate, a safety gate, they are too young to be left alone. Right? It's too weird to me. I mean, I hate judging other parents, especially people that have lost their child, but like, I just don't understand this. It's it's really, really bizarre. And the resort staff, I guess they're calling it, it can be kind of considered a resort, yeah. but the staff that, because I'm sure there's people that actually There is a staff that manage the pool, yeah. yeah. They had left a note in a message book at the swimming pool reception area, uh, area asking that the same table which overlooked the apartments be booked for 8.30 for the McCann's and Friends every evening for the last four evenings of the trip. So this just confirms that this wasn't yeah. the first time that they did this. No, they were every night letting the kids go to sleep and then going out and drinking and eating and hanging So if out. you have a couple, like obviously if nothing goes wrong, you're like, oh, okay, they're fine. Yeah, but it's just like... At the ugh. expense of your... They should have had... Here's the thing. They're both doctors. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have money, clearly. Why not hire Why not just any? like get somebody to just chill and that way you don't have to go like inner constantly get up and yeah, leave and go yeah. check yeah it's just irresponsible so the message also said the group's children were asleep in the apartments madeline's mother believes the abdu abductor may have seen the note that's interesting again and, and one of the theories that you you brought up earlier was the idea of a possible staff member yeah I brought this up earlier because today. they would have seen mm -hmm. that note knowing that because the whole thing right is somebody would have had to know the the schedule to get in and out real quick yeah so if i think it really could have been a resort person because they would have to be someone that knew that madeline was there and that the parents were doing this like we just said so it seems like it would have to be or very likely could be, or they were paid to give someone else mm -hmm. information mm -hmm. outside of it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, some of you are probably confused because yeah. they haven't even gotten to what happened yet. <laughs> I, yeah, we got to get through. Well, what most happened. honestly, most people that are listening to this probably already know the like yeah. general yeah. idea of the story. I mean, she clearly goes missing. So, yep. But the McCanns and their friends left the restaurant roughly every half hour to check on their children. Madeline's father Jerry ca carried out the first check on apartment five A at around nine o five. The children were asleep and all was well, except that he recalled having left the children's bedroom door slightly open, but now it was almost wide open and he pulled it nearly closed again before returning to the restaurant. So which, he thinks someone had already gone in? I think he just kind of remembered that as being weird. Like, why is the door slightly? Yeah. Which I'm thinking like, could it have been, but open though? I was yeah. like, a window could be open, could push it, but that would have closed it probably. Yeah. So how to get So open she was wider. still in there though at this point. Yeah. So what is he I don't know. I guess he I think was, he just thought it was weird. Maybe that this person has come in a few times. <laughs> that just seems crazy to me. Isn't it? Like they came in the night before but decided not to, then they came in again, then decided not to, and then they came back later. I don't know, man. That it's it's really weird and it happens again actually. But he pulls it back, you know, almost closed. They wanted to just leave it closed enough that there was a little bit of light coming through from the living room. So he, after he did that, he returned to the restaurant. And soon after, one of the other parents named Jane Tanner left to check out her children. And she said that when she was on the way to the apartment, she saw a man who was walking away from the apartment while carrying a small child. Jane claimed that the girl was wearing pink PJs and was limp in the guy's arms as if she was sleeping. Jane didn't really think too much of this because there were a lot of children at the resort. And so she figures it was probably just somebody's dad carrying their sleepy kid. And then at around 930, one of the other parents named Matthew Oldfield went to the apartment to check on everybody. He says that when he was there, he did not notice that the door was open again, but that he did see the twins. However, he wasn't able to confirm that he for sure saw Madeline in her bed. He probably figured that she was 
in the bed and just under the covers and you know just kind of peeking in wasn't really able to make out if she was in there or not Mm. which is interesting yeah but then at 10 p.m it was kate's turn to check on the kids she left the restaurant and walked to the apartment where they were staying when she got in madeline's room the first thing she noticed was the fact that the window was open and that the curts were flapping in the wind and that was not how the parents left the room when they went to dinner someone had opened the window she then realized that madeline wasn't there and so she started literally tearing the entire apartment apart looking for her and once she realized that she was in the apartment she obviously just started freaking out and ran to tell everybody now one thing that is super weird and really stupid is the fact that when she left to go tell her friends that madeline was missing she just left the twins back at the apartment yeah yeah like that's if one like of your children is missing criticism. and somebody could have busted through your window why would you just leave yeah. your other two twins there that doesn't make a lot of sense and so, this is like i mean people are very critical of them and, and yeah. it's like some of the things that they did are a little weird mm-hmm. and also when she went to the restaurant to tell her friends she said they've taken her apparently and if kate was so sure that someone took her then why would they leave her other kids in the yeah apartment? that's so weird and how was she sure that somebody had taken her you would think that she would just like scream out just so, like come here i don't mm-hmm. know i don't even know i guess it's hard to say what you would do in that situation though yeah i think everybody wants to judge and cast judgment on people in these types of situations mm-hmm. but unless you've been in this situation i don't think you can judge and i don't think you can you know pin blame on somebody when no but you can con- critique for yeah sure. you can critique yeah i mean you can critique people's actions and things but you go into shock. I mean, if you're, I can't yeah. imagine if, if my daughter was just gone. Oh yeah. And I don't even know how I would act. I've never been in that situation. Yeah, I've never I mean, been you in don't know situation. how like clear your thinking right. is. Maybe she f- literally forgot about her other two kids because she's so worried about right. Madeline. Yeah. So, but yeah, it is a little interesting. So after Kate told everyone that Madeline was missing, Jane told her how she remembers seeing a man carrying a little girl in pink PJs. And they went to the lobby of the resort and reported that one of their children had gone missing. She described this man as being around five, seven with dark hair and looked to be somewhere in his thirties. The police were then called and at around 10 30, they showed up soon after the national criminal investigation police unit also arrived. And once the police showed up, they started doing a search for Madeline hotel staff and guests also volunteered to help search the surrounding areas for her. Unfortunately, their search wasn't successful and they couldn't find her or any traces Nothing. leading to where she went, Nothing. just literally vanished, mm-hmm. vanished from the apartment. It's wild. So this case, I think because these parents were, I think the unfortunate truth about missing persons cases is that the more money and status you have, and this might be more true in other parts of the world, but it seems like the more, you know, sort of money and status you have, you know, these are two doctors. Yeah. The more attention you're going to get mm-hmm. from the media mm-hmm. you know this was a caucasian family so yeah i think well there's a lot of cr- criticism about that in general i mean there's other i mean if it's if it's not just like race and wealth there's other wealthy white children that are missing that don't get the same coverage as madeline even so there's almost like a conspiracy like why does madeline get so much coverage versus other people because literally isn't it like a million over a million dollars or two million dollars they've spent on this case or or more? I yeah, was reading. It's, it's like it's crazy. A lot. It's and a lot. people are kind of pissed about it over there. Yeah, two point three million. Oh, even more than that. So yeah. Um They've received tons and tons of funding for yeah. their search here. So me, why? Because they are because they are who they are and they literally went to the prime minister of the of the united kingdom and pleaded with them to help and that's exactly yeah. what they did i think another part of it too is just the fact that it was like a vacation and the story is so interesting like the parents it's just a very interesting story so it's caught the public's attention and they basically are going to cover the cases that the public's most interested in um i think people are always curious about like how that works well the the other reason too is that the portugal authorities I think spent like a year on this case like they they did not they struggled too. they struggled they did not have adequate resources they didn't have because this area was I think lesser developed Mm -hmm. so there wasn't as much police there wasn't as much special investigation uh, no they didn't have any of that they really didn't know what to do like I don't think they even had a homicide unit if I remember right yeah so they 
once they realized the Portugal authorities weren't going to be able to do, you know, take this as far as it needed to go or had the resources to do that, that's when they, you know, really started reaching out and getting on the news and all these different uh, TV stations and things like that. And actually yeah. in May 2011, under uh, at the time, Home Secretary Theresa May, an investigation called Operation Grange was launched. The team included 29 detectives and eight civilians. Um, the Sun, the magazine The Sun, had their front page consist of an open letter from the McCanns in which they asked Prime Minister David Cameron to open a new inquiry or investigation. In Operation Grange, uh, the team had tens of thousands of documents translated, re released an age progress image, and investigated over 8,000 possible sightings, which we'll talk about more. But tons and tons of money has been raised for this over the year. There's been people such as Richard Brand, J.K. Rowling, uh, so many other uh, businessmen that have put money in this fund to find her. Literally hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. We're talking millions yeah, of dollars have millions. gone into the search. So, and what's crazy is that an average missing person investigation costs roughly $3,000. So way, 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 way less. And, and again, it goes back to this idea of the more prominent you are, the more wealthy you are, yeah. the better chances that you're going to get help in your search. Yeah, well, money's definitely a factor for sure. But I think a lot of it is the public's interest. And that's just like an issue that we have is the public doesn't seem to get very concerned or interested in cases that don't have an interesting enough story or people of color or po like poor people. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of criticism around this case specifically because it's just been so over the top. I mean, bigger than any investigation. Yeah, that's why it's ever. literally like one of the most well-known cases of it's all the time. the most well-known missing persons case in the world. Yeah. For sure. Absolutely. So this is another case in which the police were, you know, ill-equipped for this type of investigation and they made a ton of mistakes, which I, I don't know how many cases we're going to go through where the authorities and the police make right. huge, huge mistakes that could literally bring about evidence to at least give them clues on where to look. First of all, the authorities never taped off the apartment as a crime scene. And so lots of people are going in and out of the apartment after she disappeared, which obviously makes things way fucking harder. Yeah, especially when, when you're you looking for DNA. a person. Yeah. Oh, my God. When DNA is like of the essence, like this seems like common sense, like a basic ass, like a fucking 12 year old would know not to do that. I know it's crazy. Like you people awesome must have some happened. training. I, you would think that in every detective school across the world, they'd be like number one rule. Be careful with evidence and don't fuck up a don't crime. Don't touch scene. shit. Do not contaminate the crime scene. Right. That's like number one. Don't make, if it if you suspect that somebody is taken, that is foul play. Mm -hmm. So why in an open window? Why the clearly. hell wouldn't you make that a crime scene? Yeah, it should have been a sealed crime scene. That's absolutely ridiculous. It doesn't make any That's sense. That's probably their fucking first mistake here. There's a ton. And then of course, again, they fucked up again when they waited several hours after she was reported missing to alert the border patrol. Nice. Which is a huge mistake because the kidnapper could have easily taken her out the window and then literally went anywhere. I mean, in Europe, all the countries are are like within driving distance. All the borders are. Yeah. So you could easily grab somebody and then take them across the border. So they didn't even bother to be like, hey, yeah, everybody on the border, keep a lookout if you see any suspicious, you know, people that have a small child. Mm hmm. And also it took the International Criminal Police Organization, Interpol, five days to put out a global missing person alert. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I mean, there's no point at that point. Why not, Why even fucking put it out at that point? What the hell? The alerts are supposed to be an immediate thing so that people can be on the lookout while they're still like possibly in alert, the area. Right. So stupid. Like, they're going to be so far if she was taken. Whoever took her probably long was gone. long gone long after gone. five days. Yeah. God, it's so bad, dude. I'm. It's so disappointing to hear because so many of these cases that we cover because they end up being the most interesting ones with the most to talk about are ones where the police fucked it up somehow. Yep. yep. Because that's what leaves us with the most fucked up cases, the most confusing cases, and no answers. Yeah. And still no, you know. Yeah. Nobody's been found, or she hasn't been found. And not only that, they did not interview everyone at the resort at the time. People on vacation later 
contacted the British police to say no one had spoken to them. Police took DNA samples from Madeline's bedroom, which were sent to three forensic labs in Portugal. It was reported on June 1st, 2007, that DNA from one stranger had been found, but around 20 people had entered the apartment before it was closed off. <laughs> so it could be anybody's. Oh, fuck. And that so actually bad. led nowhere. So bad. According to Madeline's mother, an officer placed tape across the doorway of the children's bedroom, but left at 3 a.m. without securing the apartment. The police case file, which was released in 2008, showed that apartment 5A lay empty for a month after the disappearance. Then it was let out or then it was rented out to tourists before being sealed off in August 2007 for more forensic tests. What the hell? What's even the point? There's no, no point, point at that. No point. No point. Outside of the apartment, a crowd gathered by the front door, including next to the children's bedroom window, through which an abductor may have entered or even left evidence. Who knows? An officer dusted the bedroom's window's exterior shutter for fingerprints without wearing gloves or other protective clothing. Good that's work. Just, that's there, just sloppy team. police work. And uh, yeah. Imagine the amount of cases out there that if officers just did what they were trained to do yeah. properly. Well, is it there? Are they getting the training, though? That's well, where that's debatable. For <laughs> it's, sure. it's from the top. The problem's from the top with most of these police. They're not getting the accurate training. or And there's no, uh, you know, I don't feel like they get held accountable for a lot of the things that they fuck up on. So no, no one and, learns and from it. It's, it's very disappointing. And obviously yeah. not every police department, not every uh, detective no, not. doesn't know how to do their job. That's not true at all. But there is way too many fuck ups for such an yeah. important job. Like yeah, somebody's yeah. life is on the yes, line and this you're is too important. You're making simple mistakes like not wearing gloves while dusting for like what? Letting 20 people walk through. Like, are you fucking yeah. kidding me? Not securing a crime. Like, I know they probably don't have enough like that much funding where they live, maybe. But still, like this is just basic common knowledge. Like I said, a twelve a twelve year old would probably know not to do that. Same kind of shit with like a man and ox and all that shit. Yeah, oh too. yeah, the man and ox one is like, like I God, mean, there's so many that crime so scene. many cases where they just make just mistakes Idiot that are moves. so unnecessary. Yeah, mm -hmm. so unnecessary. It pisses me off. Like the more like the more I learn about these crimes and the more I see it, like it just starts to just like. I almost laugh. It's just so bad. It's really bad. And with how big of a problem that like people going missing is, you would think that they like the authorities would be trying to figure out new ways to be innovative in, in investigating these types of things, which maybe they are. And maybe I just don't know about it, but it seems like there really isn't that much progress being made in how you investigate a missing person's case. And in many cases, they're like, what is it, 24 hours or so before yeah. you can even re report somebody missing? Well, not anywhere in the United States, but I'm not sure about other countries. For a while, it was like, it depended on the state that you're in, but it was anywhere from 72 hours to 24 hours. But now it's like, they have to do it right away. Mm -hmm. It's illegal for them not to. Well, especially in, in a situation where you think somebody may have been abducted by yeah. somebody. And and they can try to lie to you and be like, no, we can't do it yet, but they they have they can. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. It's it's just fucked changed. up. Yeah, it is. But before we get into the theories surrounding her disappearance as well as who some of the suspects were and are, I want to take a brief break to thank our last sponsor, Upstart. Debt, some have a lot, some have a little. And the vast majority of us have some sort of debt. But that path to financial freedom can look awfully bleak when you have high interest debt. And if your FICO score isn't great or your credit score, it can make breaking out of that revolving debt cycle harder than it needs to be. <laughs> harder than it needs to be. Thankfully, our sponsor Upstart is revolutionizing the process of personal lending. Upstart offers personal loans, but they're not like the ones your bank or credit union provide. That's because Upstart goes beyond the traditional FICO score when assessing your credit worthiness. They actually reward you based on your education and your job history in the form of a smarter interest rate, which is really nice, especially if you're just starting out. When I first started out in the adult world, I would struggled with credit card debt and my credit got you know, sort of ding for that. And then the credit card debt racks up. And then I had no way to get that back down. And I had no loan options because of my credit score. So I wish I could have had something like this, 
where they would actually account for my work history that I had and my education to give me a much lower interest rate. Cause like, yeah, they'll give you a loan to pay off your credit debt or your credit debt, but it's going to be fucking super high and you're, it's not going to make anything better for you. Yeah. So that's where upstart is different is they take all other things into account. And all you got to do is it, it takes two minutes to go online and find out what your upstart rate would be. It's always free and it won't affect your credit. And the best part is That's that nice. once your loan is approved, the funds will be transferred to you the very next business day. So if oh. you need fast cash, you need money quick, Upstart can get it to you the next day. And over 100,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit cards, fund their wedding, or simply to make a large purchase. And now it's your turn. All you got to do is go to upstart.com slash mile hard to find out how low your upstart rate is checking your rate only takes two minutes and it won't affect your credit you got nothing to lose that's upstart.com slash mile higher all right let's talk about some of the suspects in madeline's disappearance so there's obviously the suspicious man that jane had mentioned seeing Mm -hmm. that was also reported by another couple marty and mary smith yeah, which I talked about this in my video, but there's been an update since. Right. But what's interesting about this is that Jane reported seeing a child in this man's arm who's wearing those pink PJs similar to Madeline's. And what's interesting is that Jane actually told the Portuguese police, but they did not pass the description to the media until May 25th. Oh, so this could have been a this what could the have been fuck? the abductor. Obviously, we know it's not now. But at that yeah, time, the fact that they, you? why wouldn't you pass along <laughs> any possible suspects to everybody? So what people, else are you doing? You'd think this would be number one priority. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, it, it makes absolutely no, no sense whatsoever. Really bad. But years later, literally years later, in October 2013, the British man uh, or the person, the, this particular suspect was a British man who was on vacation that had been identified and basically cleared because he was just a normal person that was returning to their apartment after getting his daughter from the ocean club daycare kids club. Yeah. So it was, it, it looked sketchy, but the fact that it literally took years for them to, to rule that out, to rule yeah. this guy out. And yeah, so that's many new people because before thought, it was not so many people, I think thought that it had to have been this guy. I really thought it was when I, I mean, when I did my video, that's what I said. I mean, I get why you would think that too. I would be like, what, what the, but it's really not that weird because he was walking back to his apartment. Yeah. But if you were just like walking at night and you saw somebody like walking with like a a child, like limp in their arms, you'd be weirded out for sure. Well, I mean, if, if If then a kid went missing, you know, there was also another person of interest named Robert Murat. Robert was a 34 year old that lived in his mother's house. That was 150 yards from apartment five a and was also in the direction in which the man in Jane Smith siding had walked. So Robert was actually hired as an interpreter for the case because he had talked about how he had a daughter in England around Madeline's age and therefore he wanted to help in any way he could. It wasn't until a journalist from the Sunday mirror paper went to police and reported that Robert had been asking a lot of questions and talking a lot about the case and that it made her think that he was really suspicious and had something to do with the case. Three members of the top of seven, which was kind of the, yeah, the nickname they gave for the group of uh, parents and friends, Fiona Payne, Russell O'Brien and Rachel Oldfield said they, they had seen Robert outside apartment five, a shortly after the disappearance as did an ocean club nanny, which the fact that there's a nanny there, I'm like, well, why didn't they get a nanny? Yeah. What the, there fuck? was other nannies there. Like people, like I'm sure yeah. they were easy to get. So it's Especially weird if that you they have didn't money. do like, that. It's just so pathetic. Yeah. It's a no brainer. I feel like, yeah, but these reports seem to make sense considering how close Robert lived to five a. However, he and his mother insisted that he had been at home all night. And on May 15th, Robert's home was actually searched. They drained his pool They searched his cars, computers, phones, and videotapes, as well as his garden using ground radar and sniffer dogs. I remember that. And then two of his other friends were also questioned. And then it was searched a second and third time on August 4th and 5th. So they clearly thought that there is a good possibility that this guy may have had something to do with her disappearance. Mm -hmm. But despite all the searching, there was nothing that linked Robert or his friends to the disappearance. 
and they actually received 770,000 for defamation. Wow. Damn. So that's, yeah, that's the tough thing, man. They got, yeah, they, that's people, why you have to be careful with the, with accusing people of things, but they were actually brought back into the investigation in G July, 2014. One of, uh, Robert's friends was questioned again as a witness. And then in 2000 or December, 2014, Robert and his wife were questioned along with eight others. In 2017, Robert's mother, Jenny Murat, added her voice to those who had witnessed suspicious events around 5A that evening. She told the BBC that she had driven past apartment 5A that night and had seen a young woman in a plum-colored top behaving suspiciously just outside it. She also said she had seen a small brown rental car speeding toward the apartment, driving the wrong way down a one-way street. And this was the first time she shared this information with police. Are you fucking kidding me? Why would you wait? Dude, and, and how many cases is there someone Th who had something thing is, and fucking fuck, waited? Dude. It kills me. Investigation 101. Freaking mm -hmm. interview everybody you can. Yeah, it's Interview like, anybody that knows anything. Yeah. Knock on doors. Go mm -hmm. next door. Did you see anything? No? Mm -hmm. Next door. Mm -hmm. Did you? Lazy police Because people work. have these like little things and they either don't come forward or they don't get interviewed. It's just such trash and what's interesting is the fact that she said she saw a suspicious woman yeah i thought that was interesting and too. my thought is if you're going to send somebody in to abduct a child a woman would be yes. way less suspicious looking mm -hmm. than a man mm -hmm. right yeah totally i Just think by, i think you know most people would say men are more suspicious especially with children yeah like have you seen those people like male nannies that get the cops called on them because yeah. they're driving with kids and yeah. if the kids look upset then somebody gets worried and they yeah. call the police yep because mm -hmm. they well i mean can you blame people like most of the time the little girls get kidnapped and little boys by men like i'm sorry it's not saying it doesn't happen at all and there are female killers there are female kidnappers absolutely but it's far less common very very minimal um normally when a woman like kidnaps a kid it's because they want to like have them as their own or they can't have their own kids for some reason that's normally what it is um so i th i think sending in someone like that would make a lot of sense yeah wouldn't it yeah because like i don't if somebody drove by and you just saw like a woman carrying yeah. a child you'd be like it's probably her kid oh, it's probably her kid or she's yeah. a nanny or something mm -hmm. yeah especially in like a vacation -y area mm -hmm. and the fact and the fact that she even was able to see the rental car that's really yeah really interesting and I think odd. is probably a huge, you know, a huge piece of witness testimony to have and important info to have. Yeah. But it's too late now. <laughs> they yeah. should have fucking had that back when she first went missing. So this, the investigation continued and the police just had, just kept going from suspect to suspect. But one of the biggest suspects in this entire case is the parents, Kate and Jerry McCann. Because it didn't take long after the disappearance for the media to start turning on the parents. And this made people believe that they were maybe the ones who did it and the whole thing was a cover up. In an article, it stated that the McCanns were suspects and it included alleged inconsistencies between their statements and implied that Jane Tanner sighting had been made up as a cover up to distract. So the media really kind of went crazy with this one, I think. I think they really were grasping at straws and were they were like oh well maybe you know some of their stories are kind of inconsistent yeah. and there's a lot of interviews with the mm -hmm. uh the parents as well as other friends as a part of this top of seven that mm -hmm. they're sweating or they, they, see, they yeah. look they just look weird like they that's look, i think the main reason that people are so suspicious of them is that they act stuff. like all of them and especially the parents act like they seem guilty like and I'm definitely not saying they are, because honestly, I don't think they are. Um, but that's why so many people think, like, there's a, some major hate directed at them. Like, people fucking hate them. Um, and I think that's really it. It's just, like, people expect way more emotion from someone who lost a child. Yeah. You know? It's interesting that um, people will make such a big decision like that or, like, decide if someone may have killed their own child because of the way they react. Yeah, just based upon their know. 
facial expression. It's like, yeah, I mean, she was crying like at first and stuff, but then they like, they just, the motion went down and down. And then like you said, sweating, fidgeting, like a lot of the interviews, there's um tons of YouTube videos of people like um, using all these. There's a Ted talk of how to spot a lie, how to spot a liar. And there's all these YouTube videos that compare interviews of the McCanns to that Ted talk and point out all these ways that they look to the left when they lie and they, you know, twitch and they do all these certain fucking moves. So people think they're lying. Well, and they could be because they did. There was some inconsistencies in their yeah. stories. Yeah. So here, here's some of that. So one of the inconsistencies was whether the McCanns had entered the apartment by the front or back door when checking on the children. According to the police case file, Jerry stated during his first interview on May 4, 2007, that the couple had entered 5A through the locked front door for his 9.05 and 10 o'clock checks. However, in a second interview on May 10th, he said that he had entered through the unlocked patio doors at the back. Mm. Which I think part of this could be too, like if you were going to play, you know, if you're going to say, oh, that's sketchy or weird. I mean, I think it'd be hard Think, you know, when you know your child is missing, it could be in harm's way yeah. to like try to like figure out what happened and you yeah. know, remember little details like whether you went in the front door or the back door. But well, you don't know that you're going to have to remember them either. You know, like how mm -hmm. many things like what if someone had to ask you like what you did all day today so far? Like and what time exactly did you go to the bathroom? And do you remember anything weird in the bathroom? You know, like it's kind of hard, harder than people realize so especially when you're going through like a mental trauma of losing a child yeah so no no you're right um we talked about this already a little bit but the police were also kind of sketched out about the fact that kate after she realized madeline was missing just randomly ran back or not randomly but ran back to the rest of the group without her other two children yeah after she realized somebody took her because she remember she said they've taken her. So it's yeah, like, but like in her defense, like what else is she supposed to do? Like the way that you're going to get a hold of someone fastest is to get like, and it's an emergency situation. She's like, I need to get, I need to let people know that she's gone immediately. So it's probably faster. I don't even know if they had cell phones. Would they have cell phones back then? Probably not. Yeah. 2003. Yeah. Do they have phones? Oh, it was 2007. Yeah. Right. Um, well, I, I don't know. Maybe they didn't have their phones on them or they weren't working in a foreign country or something like you never know. Maybe it was too, she didn't even have it on her. And her yeah. first thought is like, I need to it'd tell be, someone. And would it be, be harder yeah. to wake up two kids like right. and you're crying and stuff? They're going to be totally freaked out. And like that's going to slow you down so much. And I feel like she I don't know. No, that you're that I makes think too much sense. is being made out of that. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of put pushing for, you know. Yeah. Poking for something. And again, people are poking for stuff because they act weird. So mm -hmm. people are like getting, they get bad vibes from them, which I get too. Like, I like to think I have a good kind of radar for people and like, mm -hmm. you know, but I get bad vibes from them too. I d yeah. I, I think they are, I don't know. They I just don't know seem, why. Mm. I really feel sorry for them, but especially the father. I don't know. I don't really know. I don't want to, I really don't want to like, it's like it's but so can you hard cast to judge judgment from afar. on them. Yeah. But like you have to because kids do get mur murdered by their kid, their parents yeah. and get well, away with it. We just talked about Chris Watts. So there you go. Yeah. So we have to. And he was going to attempt to like cover it up and hide it. Yeah. Yep. But how? But how? So the main like rebuttal to the parents somehow being involved is A, what did they do? Did they murder her? If they murdered Madeline, then where's her body? Yeah. And And the amount of time that they had to execute something like that would have been very short impossible window. nearly yeah someone probably would have seen them and but then i think the biggest debunker for them being suspects is the fact that they did hard press everybody to help search to yeah. raise money they went to the government they wouldn't you want to keep it quiet right if you yeah. really did do something or mm -hmm. responsible wouldn't you kind of like want it to just like fade away and keep it quiet and yeah. try to, you know. And really the only place they could have put her body is like the ocean, really. like. But how in that time period? It would have been very hard to. And even if they did, it probably would have washed up on shore. Bodies normally like come back in. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, I think that's very unlikely. Here's another issue. And that is whether the exterior shutter over Madeline's bedroom window could be open from outside, meaning someone broke into the house. And according to a journalist named Danny Collins, the shutter was made of metal slats on a roller that in a box at the top of the inside window. Once the slats were rolled down, the slats locked in place outside the window and could only be raised by using the strap on the inside. Kate said the shutter and window were closed when Madeline was put to bed, but open when she discovered Madeline was missing. Jerry told the police that when he f- was first told about the disappearance, he had lowered the shutter, then had gone outside and discovered that it could be raised only from the outside. Contrary to this, the police said the shutter could not be raised from the outside without being forced, but there was no sign of forced entry. They so also said the forcing hell? the shutter open would have caused a lot of noise. Hmm. Huh. How does that? The whole window thing is very weird, though, because if the window was open at all, how did the other mm. kids not hear it? Well, or maybe they did and if, they didn't do it. They, I mean, they're so young, they can't do anything or say anything. Yeah. Or maybe the, there is nothing to do with the window. Maybe they just went through the unlocked door. But the window was open and it wasn't open. Well, there's now they're saying they didn't know if it wasn't Yeah, open. it seems like we don't, we don't really, even really even know. know. We don't even really know who opened the window. It seems or like it maybe, wouldn't be kind of hard to take someone out of the window. So they probably went through the door. Well, if the door was already unlocked, why would yeah. you fuck with them? Like trying to jump out the window with the kid. Like, Yeah, I don't know. That doesn't make much sense. Mm. Um, Some other people have said that the uh, Madeline's parents made police believe that there's potentially no abduction at all. And the fact that Kate said they've taken her when she told the other parents instead of something like Madeline is gone. So this made people yeah, believe that like she had set up the abduction story. Madeline isn't in her bed or something. Not just like they've taken her who have taken her. Yeah. Well, here's, here's another theory that's out there and that's that Madeline had died in the apartment as a result of some type of accident and that her parents had hidden her body for a month before retrieving her and driving her into an unknown place in a car they rented over three weeks after the disappearance. That's bullshit. There's a photo of her the day that she was missing, went missing. No, missing a month pool. or they after she she goes missing. She's oh, in, they she's hung on to her body for a month. Yeah. Oh, my God. Come on. Yeah. They've looked at their cars. Yeah. How would Jesus. that, how would that have really people come up with that's just reaching hard. Mm-hmm. They that, just kept her body in that the, the parents like gave her sleeping medicine and like they overdid. it. But like, what would you give a child? What are you giving a child ambient? Like, what are you, they're not going to take the chance because even if they didn't search the car, like you'd probably think that they would. So why would you like, that just doesn't even make sense. That doesn't even make sense. No, it doesn't make sense at all. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's pretty out there. That is really strange. But on June 28th, the McCann suggested to the police that the police request help from Danny Krugel, who was a South African former police officer who had developed a handheld device that he claimed could locate missing people using DNA and satellites called a matter orientation system. Other people in the science world were saying this guy was likely full of shit, but the McCanns were desperate and willing to try anything. They even considered hiring psychics, which a lot of people, a lot of missing people do our uh, parents or family members of missing people do try to bring psychics in and see if, you know, a psychic can give them any clues. But this also just reinforces this idea that the Ma- Madeline's parents had nothing to do with her disappearance because why would they literally be trying yeah, every single that doesn't avenue make sense possible to try to, to like, get her. find her yeah. if they mm. just killed her and put her somewhere and dispose of her body somehow and, and then why What's i was also thinking like maybe the reason they act so sketch all the time or they act nervous in interviews is because they know people think it was them and even if you know someone thinks you've done something you feel weird uncomfortable and like low-key guilt even when you haven't done anything mm-hmm. you know like even going through like <laughs> airport security even though i know <laughs> nothing's wrong i get like kind of nervous when i'm going through that kind of thing so i don't know it just doesn't I don't know. Yeah. It, it doesn't make a I lot of sense. I think you could be like, you know, somewhat nervous just because you think someone thinks you may have done something. Yeah. And I mean, there's, there's tons of people have thought that they, they, uh, McCann's had hired this guy from South Africa, the Danny Krugel, and they did a bunch more searches, try to make it seem like they were like searching when in reality they actually knew what happened. Yeah. 
So they did all these other things to try to like throw everybody off and mm-hmm. be like, oh, we searched everything. Yeah, which I mean, could kind of work. And there have been people that have done that. I mean, look at Chris Watts. He did a like an interview the day after he killed them on the you know news being like, oh, I need, th- need them back. They're missing. Yeah. So a lot of people do kind of like pretend to be looking to like cover them their asses. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So, I mean, this is such a huge case and it went on for years and year, years and the McCann's have spent close to 20 million. Wow. Total. Wow. Okay. Way more than I said. What did I say? 2 million? Yeah. Yeah. I think 2 million in government money has been put towards it or but something. But there's been so many private, private donations and things like that. Like, yeah. Uh, Richard Branson ha- has yeah, donated. People are obsessed with finding her. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. But here's some other possible suspects as well. So in the early days of the investigation, the Portuguese police searched through images seized from pedophile investigations and Madeline's parents were shown photographs of sex offenders in case they recognized them from their apartment complex. Several British pedophiles were of interest. In May 2009, investigators working for the McCanns tried to question one, Raymond Hewlett. He had allegedly told someone he knew what happened to Madeline, but he retracted and then later died of cancer in Germany in December of last year. Damn. Inquiries were also made about two pedophiles who had been in jail in Scotland since 2010 for murder. However, the men were running a window cleaning service in the Canary Islands when Madeline went missing. Uh, There was another man in Northern Ireland uh, who discussed in the media in connection with the disappearance after being released from prison for the sexual assault of his four daughters. Um, And that he was not far away from their apartment complex when Madeline went missing. They looked at a bunch of different people, basically. Like they they literally tried every single avenue Mm -hmm. they could possibly think of to try and figure out who could have possibly taken Madeline? Yeah, I mean, why? wouldn't you? Like, yeah. God, I just, I if I knew there was even a chance that she was still alive and out there, I would be doing everything I could, you know? Oh, it's such a shitty place to be in. Like, I've said this before, I think, but I think it would be so much harder to have a child go missing than to just have them pass away. Because at least if they pass away, you can like yeah, mourn the death and move on. You know but what like, happened. just not even knowing what happened to them or like thinking that they could still be out there somewhere. They're alive. That would drive in, me nuts. They're possibly enduring like the worst physical harm or pain or. <sighs> One person I would love to get on this podcast if we were ever able to pull it off is um, Johnny Gosh's mom. Just because it's been so long. Like, and she knows she's very convinced he's still alive and is out and living in as well. Well, let's talk so, about that. Let's talk about the theories and even possible conspiracies about Madeline. Oh, no, we will. I'm sorry. I was bringing up Johnny Gosh. No, no, no. That's. I that's, just think her mom, his mom does tons of media stuff. She would probably be willing to come on. Yeah, it'd be super interesting. I'd love to speak with her. This, yeah, the missing person phenomenon is, I mean, is really what it is. I mean, it's just this crazy thing of people... Where well, are these so people going? Most of them are going into sex trafficking. And I I mean, I think my opinion is Madeline got put into sex trafficking. Yeah. You know, whether or not the parents were involved or assisted is a debate. But I think that's what happened to her. I think that's what makes sense. She's exactly what they're looking for. It's a foreign country. They They look at these vacation spots. That's why, like, I have got to say to all of you, if you go to any resorts in anywhere, no matter where you are, make sure you're on guard and you're on, you're, you're really, because people get too fucked up and they go out, like people go out and walk on the beach at night drunk because they're like vacation land. Especially and, if you're a female. Yeah. Go with somebody else. That's what they're looking for. They yeah. literally are scouting out those types of places. Absolutely. Yeah. Josh, I won't mention the place that we stayed, but we stayed at a resort this year, earlier in the year. And it was like, there was guys straight up in all black running across the beach with walkie talkies. And I don't know if they were doing drug stuff, but I was thinking like they could be doing sex trafficking stuff for all we know. Who like knows? We, I reported it to the staff and everything, but this is where that kind of stuff happens. So I think chances are that's what happened to her. I know that's what happened to Johnny. Yeah. And I think that's what happens to most of the people I talk about, sadly. Well, here's what's interesting about, about that is that um, Portugal has a complete trafficking profile. Mm. And this is recent as of this year. As reported over the past five years, Portugal is a destination transit and to a lesser extent source country for men, women, and children subjected to forced labor and sex trafficking. 
tra trafficking victims primarily originate from West Africa, Eastern Europe, Asia, and to a lesser extent, Latin America. Most victims are sub subjected to forced labor with seasonal migrant workers, especially vulnerable. Foreign labor trafficking victims are exploited in agriculture, construction, domestic service, while Portuguese victims are exploited in restaurants or are, are especially vulnerable to forced labor networks in Spain, which that's the whole thing is like there's sex trafficking and then there's just human trafficking for yeah. forced labor and mm -hmm. for just slavery, just yeah. straight up human slavery mm -hmm. across the world. It's not as big, but yeah. No, it's big. But it's it, not as big as sex trafficking. It, I mean, it's, it's bigger yeah. by far. Yeah. So there was, so over the period of time that's lapsed since Madeline first went missing, there's been 9,000 supposed sightings of Madeline McCann around the world. Wow. Damn. So, and there's been numerous variations me, of this idea of she was, you know, kidnapped and sold into sex trafficking and could have ended up in locations like Belgium all the way to Africa. In 2008, it was reported that police were examining claims that Madeline was taken on the orders of a Belgium-based pedophile ring that had placed an order for a young girl. God, so fucking creepy and gross. The highly organized gang may even have taken a photograph of Madeline beforehand so the Belgian pedophiles could confirm she fitted their requirements and give the go-ahead for the abduction. That's what I'm saying is these sex trafficking yeah. groups are extremely organized oh, for the most yeah. part. Oh, yeah. And they, they watch it out. They plan it out. I think my theory is they were working with someone that was working at the hotel that was mm -hmm. keeping an eye on what parents were leaving kids unattended yep. and what age they were. And, and they like were telling someone they get like a small... Could have been a, it could have that. been like the most unsuspecting worker too. Yep. Oh, could have been totally. a female, mm -hmm. a female worker mm -hmm. there that got suckered in by these guys. Could have been a janitor. To pay, we'll pay you big money mm -hmm. if you do this for us. Yeah, and people, you never know. People could be poor and desperate, and you'd be surprised what people are willing to do for money. So. Or they just straight up lie to them and not tell them exactly what their motive is, but tell them they're well, doing. Well, I mean, I, but yeah, they probably I mean, figure it's not good if they're looking for kids that are unattended. Yeah. Um. So I think that's what makes the most sense. But where their condo was like, because it was right next to the street, right? On that right corner. Mm -hmm. I think people could even possibly just see from outside. Well, it was dark on the night she was taken. Well, I'm saying like during the day and but stuff, yeah, scouting absolutely. her out. Oh, yeah. I bet there was somebody watching them. Uh-huh. I bet Could there have was, even been someone that was staying there. Could have been someone staying there. Could have been somebody just in a car with binoculars. I mean, who knows? Yeah. Seriously, who knows? But there's other theories out there that have suggested that Madeline could have been taken to Lagos Marina, which is five miles from that apartment complex and put on a boat bound for Morocco. There have been reports of girls fitting Madeline's description being seen in Morocco yeah. around the time of her disappearance and in the first few weeks of the hunt for their daughter. The McCanns did visit the country themselves, but no leads were discovered. Come on, like you're going to still think yeah. that the parents did it. They're traveling to Morocco. Like that would be like. Yeah. Yeah. I just I, I can't believe that one. Some people think that it was a failed break in. There's a possibility that someone broke into the house and Madeline woke up and then that person freaked out and decided to take her. Yeah. So because they she would have seen who they were. I don't know. I mean, I guess. But mm, another theory know. is that a childless couple picked her up that she could have been kidnapped or and then sold to a wealthy couple or just individuals that couldn't have kids on their own yeah. like, like they're i mean earlier. it's kind of reaching but no it's really not but the fact that witnesses claim to have seen suspicious people around the resort in the days before her disappearance uh -huh. who could have been acting as spotters searching for and i mean that could be for selling like literally they, there's a market to sell children mm -hmm. to couples for money like yeah. and not not necessarily like sex traffic but just to sell them to a, somebody that wants a child you why know? wouldn't they just fucking adopt a child then i don't know uh, that's i mean How bizarre yeah it's very weird but sort of the last theory that's out there is that maybe madeline just ran away and got lost maybe but like they said they had those like child gates so how yeah. would she have gotten out of the room or out of the yeah that doesn't make any sense. So in the event that she had left and 
lost her way in the dark and took a wrong turn. A walk of less than 200 yards would have taken her to some roadworks. It has been reported that workers repairing drains had dug a six foot deep, four foot wide trench. If she had fallen in, could she have died and then, or, you know, and was knocked unconscious? And had she then not been noticed in the trench before it was filled the next day? Possible, yeah, but Did likely, they ever dig that up? No. Huh. But the theory's been basically debunked or disputed yeah. by the engineer. I feel in the like if that was charge. possible, they would have looked. Yeah, they said the trench was checked. Yeah, okay. I'm telling you, it's sex trafficking. The fact that it was a vacation spot that was easily accessible and had road access, public access. Way too easy. Yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty fucking obvious of what happened, in my opinion. Do you think there's a possibility that she's alive out there and she's, you know, what, 15 years old now or something? And yeah. she doesn't even know who she is. And they definitely like brainwashed her and she's become somebody diff completely different. She was probably old enough to know, like who she is i mean she was what like four yeah four? she probably at least like remembers some stuff but yeah i mean i don't but know But they can like literally brainwash you like it's oh yeah well they oftentimes they get people in sex trafficking just hooked on drugs so that you're just not even asking right, questions yeah. and you're just doing what they say but i don't know it's really crazy to think about but it's it's interesting to me how many people think the mccann's yeah, like tipped yeah. off someone to I take their was, kid yeah. um just to make money and I think that's such a bizarre theory. Cause it's like rich. if they, yeah, they're already rich, but they don't even have that much money. They're not like, no, they're not like Bill Gates. They're not. No. Loaded. So, and like, if but they, they were li mil. living like an extremely rich lifestyle, like why would you do that to then go spend the next 20 years having to go through this horrible nightmare and spend all this money on this? Yeah. Like, it just doesn't make sense. Like why? There's just no why? way. There's, There's no, no way. way. There's no way. Mm -mm. There's no way if you were, if you did that, that you would go through all that effort, yeah. like fly to Morocco, do all like, yeah, clearly, I, I think it is very, very clear and almost obvious that this was some type of kidnapping and yeah. human trafficking, sex trafficking. Sadly, I agree. Situation. And it happens far too often. The numbers would completely shock Astound you, you. Yeah. about the amount of in your own, st like anywhere too. It's not even just. In Portugal, obviously, it's everywhere in any state, any country. There is some type of sex trafficking, pedophile ring. I yeah. mean, it's this is real shit. And mm -hmm. I just don't think people are aware of the reality. No, not at all. And so, you know, as a parent, you might be like, oh, we're fine. It's safe. You know, it's just a, we're in a good area, whatever in Portugal that you would never think to. I don't know, man. Leaving your kids alone in a foreign country at is night, too. Yeah. Weird. Mm. I just, I don't know, man. That's so weird. This is just such a truly bizarre Three babies case. And, alone. Um, oh, shoot. There's the, there's this, too. Oh, um, yeah. This is interesting. So there was police sketches of men that were wanted in uh, the abduction of Madeline McCann. So there's a conspiracy that's kind of Their witness sketches, come about. Yeah. They're witness sketches, yeah, of two men that do sort of look like John no, they look exactly they like look them. Exactly the drawings, like them. I'm not going to lie, look exactly like them. It's almost freaky. They look like the Podesta brothers. So if you don't know who John Podesta is, he is was Hillary Clinton's like campaign manager. And he's like a really sketchy dude. Like He's a whole other thing. We don't even need to go into his ass right now. But he's a creep. And his brother. And it looks exactly like them. It really like Josh does. will put it on the screen. It looks exactly like them. It's kind of crazy. You can just look it up too if you're listening. You can just look up uh, Podesta McCann, Mon And McCann, as you guys probably know, up. many people think the Clintons and P John Podesta and people like this are involved in some type of human trafficking, which I do to an extent. I don't know the level. But I know that there are politicians involved in this kind of stuff that, and at least benefiting from it. I mean, we don't know. Monetarily. We don't know. Again, disclaimer, we don't know. We're not saying that the Clintons and Podesta are No, I just know involved. that politicians are. Right. Maybe not them. I don't right. know who's we don't involved. Know. But I do know. I mean, there's cases we that have been proved on smaller levels, smaller government levels. Because this, this all but, came out because of the Pizzagate conspiracy yeah. when... yeah. Hillary Clinton's emails got released after she was hacked and there was and she as well weird as the, shit with John Podesta and stuff yeah. in there. And so basically, but like, it's kind of a ridiculous theory though, to, if you think about it, because right. really would and John Podesta and his brother go out and like 
kidnap a kid themselves these people are like extremely wealthy extreme like famous no why would they would it never doesn't do make any sense like this i will say it looks like them but yeah it doesn't make sense yeah they would have been 58 and 59 at the time of of madeline's disappearance and the man depicted in the sketches is somewhere between 20 and 40. so that right there doesn't and also um some versions of this rumor claim that john podesta was in portugal around the time of the incident but they were actually referencing an email about a trip which had occurred several months after madeline mccann vanished so he wasn't even there so this this one has been debunked but this is interesting there's a new female suspect in may 2017 a british online newspaper called the independent wrote an article stating that the police had identified a female suspect the article stated after months of tireless police work, they will soon be in a position to move in and finally get some answers after a decade of dead ends. It is a hugely significant line of, of inquiry that officers hope could lead to an arrest. However, despite this article, there's nothing else out there that yeah. shows any further progression in this case or in finding Madeline. Mm -hmm. But the fact that again, I, I, I the fact that I, mentioned that it could have been a female so i bet you it was yeah i bet you it was because we know that that's that's what they do a lot of the times they they do they lure you in by somebody that might look com you know well that's what they're doing with. here in america yeah. right now um if you haven't heard about this definitely be on the lookout and tell your friends if you're in america but we've had a lot of issues with people getting picked up in like Walmart parking lots or in Walmarts, like superstores, stuff mm -hmm. like that targets. And it's normally women scouting other women yeah. because they like make them feel safe or they right. tell them they're like, they have a Bible study or some come shit. To my, yeah. Come to my Bible study group. Or, yeah. But nor yeah, it is normally women. Super weird. Yeah. And any type of large parking lots guys, be very careful. Yes, do especially not go at out. night. Do not be on your phone in a parking lot ever, no. especially at night, because they are looking for people who are on their phones and not paying attention. Just get... Have your keys in your hand, if not some pepper spray ready to go, bitch. I Seriously. Always did. Seriously. That's why we always say be safe, because like yep. we want you to know about the reality of yeah. our fucking world, man. It's well, crazy. I think that's one of the benefits about learning about crime and, and you know, taking the time to to learn about these things is you end up learning what not to do. Yeah, you I've learned so aware. much about I've become way more vigilant. Yeah. You know, come woke to the what they do and yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. it's important to be informed, even though a lot of people don't like crime and they're like, yeah, that's kind of stuff bothers me. I do think it's like very useful to know about what happens. Learn from other people's mistakes. I mean, yeah. learn from, you know, the tragedies of others. If anything, these people, I feel like that go missing or end up. If anything you know, can, you know, if come anything from good it. can come of it, hopefully it can raise awareness and prevention in the from future, this happening yeah. to somebody else. That's the goal of spreading these stories is to, yeah, yeah. to get it out there. Like, hey, this is yeah. what could happen. Mm -hmm. So you should be aware that you should probably not leave your kids alone in an un, <sighs> yeah. unlocked apartment that, that's, that access, so much. that's not secure. That doesn't that has even in a resort though. I think that's stupid. Like, if, especially at that young, like you should have somebody watching them or or bring them with, like. I don't know. It just doesn't seem worth it to, you know, have a nice evening at, at the restaurant or the bar. Like it just doesn't seem worth it. But I want to know what you all think about this. Obviously, everybody's got their opinion about what happened to her. Obviously, we hope that we find out what happened to her as, as we do with, you know, all these missing person yeah. cases. I We hope we can find answers. It seems like they haven't given up hope and that they're continuing to search for her. The police are still investigating this. Yeah. This is very much an open investigation still. So Yeah, and maybe they really will solve it. I mean, I don't know, though it's hard. These cases I, I really hope that we figure out a way to fucking combat these these fuckers out there that well, are. Well, that's doing why this I shit. support Thorn, dude. Seriously. They're doing the most innovative approach to tackling this. I think technology is how you're gonna have to do it. You're that's to how they're organizing them. themselves. Yeah. Create they, AI they use to it. track these these people down yeah but that is where we will end today's episode guys on the disappearance of madeline mccann thank you all for tuning in and listening to us give our thoughts and opinions we really do appreciate you guys and if you enjoyed this please give it a thumbs up subscribe on itunes and youtube yes. we really appreciate it you can leave ratings and reviews we love reading those as well we do josh reads them to me like almost every morning i do they i get an email every day where i get to read all the new ones so i do read them and thank you guys all for the support the love for getting the merch repping the mile Heart podcast yeah we've had so much fun doing this yeah we have we've got so much 
plan for the future. Yeah, 2019 is going to be lit. It's going to be lit. We are not even in December yet, and we're already talking about that. I know, I know. <laughs> but <laughs> Always anyways. one step ahead. Guess what I'm going to do right now, you guys? I I told you in like the last podcast that I was getting little assistance for this <laughs> this room. So in the new podcast studio, I'm going to have two Holland Lot bunnies. And they're so cute. I'm so fucking <laughs> excited right now. So yeah, we're yes. about to go get them. So we're about to go get them. That so, will yeah. yeah, that's it today. Thanks for listening and watching. Stay woke and we will see you next time. <laughs>